welcome to my channel. Would you like to know how to tea or coffee dye and stencil your paper in the process? This is done with a solution of tea and coffee, as you can see, and a stencil, just a regular plastic stencil. If you'd like to know how to do this, keep watching. So what I do is I have two jugs. This one is a pint. I don't know what that is in litres. It's just over half, half a litre. Pardon. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So yes, I've got a pint there and that's got mm, a dessert spoon, maybe a spoon and a half full of coffee in it. And then I've got this one, which is two pints. And this has got six tea bags in it. I literally just grab a handful. Um, I'm going to use more tea than I am coffee because coffee stains darker than tea does. So I'm going to start off by brewing up my tea. We've got here our tea, which is lovely strewn away, and a jug full of coffee, which absolutely freaking stinks. I don't like coffee. But I find coffee dyes a lot darker than tea. Now, how much you use really does depend on how dark you like your paper. Sometimes you can get it really, really dark. I'll show you. That is done with tea and coffee. More coffee than it was tea. That is tea dyed. I've just dropped something. That is tea dyed. Sometimes you will get some really, really light results and sometimes you'll get some really, really dark results. Most of this was done with tea, you know. Also, your type of paper will um, affect how dark your uh, results. You know, some paper dyes darker than others and some dyes quite light. So, yeah, mix up your coffee, mix up your tea. Really, really let your tea stew because the darker that is, that's why you use so much, basically. Now you're going to make sandwiches. So you're going to do a page and a stencil. The bottom page will end up darker than the top page, okay? So if you are putting something like this down, you've got to decide if it's got writing on it, for example, which one you don't mind it being mirrored on. Then you add another page, okay? Then you want another bottom page and another stencil and another top page. I've got two pages there. Yeah, I've got a top, top page for that sandwich and then a bottom page for the next sandwich. One more left, so you plunk that on. And you can use anything for this. Um, you can use um, tablecloths. Uh, well, I've got some spare paper there, so I'm gonna chuck that in as well. But you can use uh, plastic tablecloths. You can use um, net curtains, um, I'm just standing there actually looking at that bubble wrap over there wondering how that would come out. <laughs> the, the, anything that's got a pattern on it, give it a try, you know, because it might actually die. It's, it's just a question of experiment and have fun. So what you do now is you pour it all on top and make a lovely mess. So. Let your tea bags go in. Obviously, this is boiling hot water, okay? So be careful. It's a tea, look, a rogue tea bag doesn't want to come out. <laughs> yes, leave your tea bags in there because where your tea bags sit on the paper, it will actually darken in those spots. Not only that, but they help weigh your paper down, all right? It stops it all trying to escape. It's going to take a while to soak into the middle of your sandwiches, okay? So this is going to end up in quite a light one, I think. So what I would recommend you do is press it down a few times and then you want to leave this until your mixture goes cold at least an hour, if not a little bit more, okay? But the longer you leave it, the more soaked it's going to get. And then once it's cold, 
come back and I'll show you what to do next. They've been soaking for, you know, however long. I went off and did something else. Um, but the water's cold. I can stick my fingers in it and all that lot. Now, um, I did have a pair of tongs, but my son's nicked them. Hang on. Sorry about that. So the first thing you want to do is get all your tea bags out. Give them a good squish and chuck them back in your jug. Getting the paper out is the tricky bit because it will stick to itself and each other and it's delicate because it's absolutely soaked okay so the trick is I pour some of the liquid away I mean you can pour it all out if you want to which is 100% what you're doing which is what I'm doing and you'll notice I've got a lot less water than I started out with so you had two drugs full and now you I have, have two one drugs full yeah some of this hasn't taken, I can sit in the substance was down there. Right, so what you've got to do now <laughs> is try and separate your paper without ripping it. It actually separates easier if you leave it in the water. Okay? So you separate it <laughs> ever so carefully. And you can see where I laid the tea bags, look. <laughs> okay? Now you want to put it on a surface that's got a waterproof cover like this and then a towel okay because the towel soak up your your liquid and the waterproof cover will obviously stop your um, surface wet. underneath getting damaged wet and stained and all of that lot and then you just lie it all out well you have tea, ta tea stain paper and a tea stain yeah yeah, yeah you don't want nice you know you don't want to dye your um best tables do you well, I don't know, they might or, do. or your mum's <laughs> dining room table. Yeah. <laughs> Not with Christmas only being a couple of months away. <laughs> yes, I said the dreaded Christmas word. <laughs> so yeah, lay them all down. That feels like it's two, and it, it is. is. Yeah. And the good thing is, is you can use this mixture again and again and again and again. I would reheat it to give it a bit of, Oomph. yeah, a bit more potency. Um, that's right. I'm just making it easier to move but yeah literally just stick it in the microwave and reheat it okay um, I'll leave the tea bags in just chuck it and take the spoon out obviously <laughs> um, chuck it in the microwave and um, reheat for the, for the big jug full um, you want to stick it in for a good five minutes you want you want it to be hot boiling hot again right we've now gotten down to the stencils can actually see the blue you the can see the blue of the stencil it hasn't taken completely because it really wasn't in there for the amount of time that I usually do it now you need to remove each sandwich so not one by one but all together. yeah you want to you want to remove the entire sandwich all in one go okay like so so you can see where it's gone through yeah I mean there is other ways you can do this you can do it by um, painting your paper so you would lay your paper down, you would get your mixture, and then you get a nice, you want a wide brush, just so you want wider than this, and then you just paint your paper with your solution, put your stencil on top, and then use a, dry, a heat gun to dry it. That's a good idea, actually. Yeah, it is, it is one way of doing it. I like to soak it, because then it gets really, you know, you get some quite, gets good, mm. quite good nuances. Can't get hold of that one. <laughs> the reason I take all the liquid out, even though it's easier to get the paper out when it's in liquid, it's because I can't actually see it. That's my crescent moon one. You can see where it's coming through. Yeah, you can see it on the You moon. know, but if you want to give it a little help, just give it a press. This is just slow getting it out, really. It's just... If you find you've done this, where you've lifted up your top part of your sandwich, don't, don't worry, just... Lay it back down again. Split it from the top sandwich and lay it back down okay what I normally do is leave these to dry on their own for a little while okay um, because it's not under there. that's where the stencil's sticking up um, because it takes ages to do it with a heat gun um, but if you want to do it with a heat gun or a hairdryer you can and the best way to do it is to dry your top piece first okay you can see this one's actually already starting to dry because it wasn't so totally saturated so let's go at it 
drying with a heat gun will also help stop it from sticking together. I'm pretty sure you actually see it lift as you dry yeah, it. Yeah, you will see it lift up as you dry it. It will get lighter as you dry it, so you will know, you know, when it's dry or not. It will take a while because these are saturated. Yeah. That's why I tend to come back and do it later. Right, this is almost finished. You can see it's changing colour as I am um, getting it drier. It's also lifting away from the stencil. You can actually see it lift, look. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, it's popping up. This method does cause crinkly paper. And then once it's up, you can lift it away. You get a very, very light impression hmm. on that one. Really it smart. would be a lot darker if I'd left it in the bath for longer. Hmm. Alright, that bit of paper is still ever so slightly damp. And now what you do is you dry through the stencil. While you're drying it, flip it over and dry the back. Then you just lift your stencil away. The markings are very light on this one, um, simply because I didn't leave it in the bath for very long. But hopefully it it's yeah, it's come through just... That's nice because it's a nice subtle one. I want it subtle. Now what I will do with the others is I'm literally going to leave all of these to dry mostly naturally. Um, simply because I, I don't want to stand there for five minutes. Drying them. Drying them and wearing out my heat gun. <laughs> you know, heat, these things are expensive. These things are like 15 odd quid <laughs> and I'm not ready to blow mine up. So yeah, so that was the top one which is very, very, very pale. I don't know how well that's showing it's up on camera. Right. Um, my daughter doesn't think it is at all. Oh, it is at the bottom a little bit. And then this one was your bottom one. So your bottom one will always come out darker than your top one, okay? Because that's where your stencil's lying. But then these are still ever so slightly damp, so just literally leave them. If you don't like this whole wrinkled look, you can put something on top of it just while it finishes drying off. Heavy or book or something. Turn it over and it will dry, you know, or you can use your heat gun to warp it back the other way. Personally, I like it like that. I think it's great. Yeah, all of these I will now leave. You can see the white dots coming through. This tells you that these bits are drying. So as they dry, just leave them. When they are almost dry, get at it with your heat gun and, um, you know, give it what for. So I hope you found that helpful. If you've got any questions, please do leave them down below. Um, I've only done this a few times, but I've had loads of fun doing it and I've got a whole stack of stack of tea and coffee dyed paper. Look, <laughs> show you, look. Look at it. <laughs> oh, hang on. Yeah, this is all, st all tea and coffee dyed. I've been having loads of fun. I use this method of soaking it purely because um, you can do more. Now, I've just found my top layer of my other sandwiches. Right, the sandwiches that I dyed previously. I'm trying to find. Right, I've got that one. Um, that is a top layer of the crescent moon. You can sort of see it. And that is the bottom layer. Hang on, I'll hold it up to the middle. Oh, yeah, that one you can really see. <laughs> yeah. And this was a bottom layer. Now, I think if you want really, really dark results, like this crescent moon one, you would need to use more coffee. Mm. But that is the top and the bottom layer there. Yeah, the bottom one's way more of a small Yeah, the bottom one is more of a white on a light paper, and this is more of a dark on a light paper. Mm. You know, so, yeah. The bottom one just kind of looks like white splotches on the screen. Yeah, but it's, it's well, it's not. It's just not going no. through on the screen yeah. very well. So, there you go. Yeah, any questions, please leave them down below. Thank you so much for joining me. Please feel free to give this video a thumbs up. Leave us a comment down below. If you click the book in the corner, I'm not sure which corner it would be because I'm not used to using <laughs> this camera, down in the bottom corner, there's a, there's a little purple book, it's my book. Um, if you click that, you'll be subscribed. If you hit the bell that then appears down below, you'll be notified, YouTube willing, when I upload new content. Take it easy, guys.